art has gone beyond art for art's sake, but some artists can go overboard. They'll just hit you right in the face with their works of art. You understand clearly when they say that a picture speaks louder than a thousand words. One artist who has ruffled many feathers is Michael Soy, who is quite popular, especially in Kenya. He has dedicated his career to exploring topics that not many of his countrymen fancy. But Emenike Ugo does it in a slightly different way, taking a more subtle approach. Then we'll see two different approaches to capturing images, everything on this week's edition of Art House. Welcome, I'm Melinda Akinlami. The writer cannot be a mere storyteller. He or she must be actively involved in shaping the present and future. Photography is receiving more prominence, especially on our shores. People are beginning to realize that it's not just taking pictures. There's a lot of art in it. And the devices used to achieve them are also changing. What do you get when you mix four friends, creativity and technology? The answer is this exhibition at four show harbors in Ikoyi, Lagos, southwest Nigeria, where a good eye is needed to capture the advancement of technology. We've been doing this since the late 60s, so I think we're beyond amateur. We've been through all the phases of uh, film, now digital. Um, but what, what I've always done with photography is look for color, strong color, strong contrast, things that please me as well as things that have a, a complicated technical uh, aspect to shooting them. Photography really is about um, capturing expressions of beauty around me so that I can enjoy them over and over again, but also so that I can share them with other people. This is because at first glance, one might think these photos are from the lenses of cameras. Until the writing on the wall sets you straight to know the difference and you are made to look again. Some of the most stunning pictures I saw were actually taken by just an ordinary mobile phone camera, which is surprising to me. So it just tells you that uh, sometimes it's not just the tools that you have, it's you who want to use those tools. I shot these with, a, with a, an interesting camera. It's a, it's a Hasselblad, which is a, a medium format. It's a large camera, um, but it produces incredible results, very, very sharp results. Uh, very easy to edit pictures, actually. You, there's nothing to do with a Hasselblad, but the only problem is it costs a lot of money to buy the camera. Well, for, for, for this one, which I call Makoko, I was just coming back from the mainland one day on the, on the on third mainland bridge, and I looked and saw this, and I thought that was such a beautiful sight. I wanted to capture it. So we stopped the car, and I got out and took that picture. And I think, to me, what that depicts really is an element of Lagos, a community that lives on water. And... In the midst of what some people may regard as squalor, there is some beauty, and that is the life that they live. Interestingly, the four artists are exhibiting for the first time, but their love for photography spans decades. And this is evident in the manner in which time stands still to be captured. At a time when photography was not digital, we had to use film, but yeah, I did a lot of photography. I'm an architect by training. So uh, part of my course and my training was a lot of traveling. We took a lot of photographs, mainly, of course, of buildings. But even at that time, I was very keen on looking at form, be it uh, landscapes, uh, urban landscapes. So yeah, it's just that when I say amateur, I haven't really been doing any photography for 10, 15 years. My photography is about harmony and balance. You know, for some reason, that's very important to me. So in, in everything that I do, I'm always seeking harmony and balance. I'm seeking beauty. And there can be beauty in the mundane, you know. You just need to have eyes that can see beyond the scene. The only female in the group speaks on how it all began from a conversation. I wanted to have an exhibition with other people, and so we all linked up to do this and I think the beauty of the, of the whole thing really is that none of us is a, pro is a professional photographer. We're all amateurs and we've never had a photo exhibition before. This is a first for all of us. For these two, their inspirations vary from color, environment, feeling and one of the most important things, timing. 
I like taking photographs of a variety of things, be they buildings, uh, people. Uh, I mean, the carnival, of course. Um, I spent six hours that day taking photographs mainly of people, individuals. I like to see the, the emotion on their faces. Uh, you know, sometimes people, when they're not posing for you, uh, they tend to show their whole lives on their expressions. So I like that. I also like landscapes. Uh, every time I travel abroad, uh, I take my camera around now all the time because you see a slice of life that you won't see ever again. The minute you take that photograph, most people don't realize that scene will never come back again. So to me, it's almost like you're capturing a slice of time all of, uh, wherever you go. And if that slice of time is interesting, quite frankly, you know it's never going to repeat itself, almost like a uh, fingerprint. There's only one of it. Birds of the same feathers certainly do flock together. We all come at it from a different angle, but there is a, a harmony, if you like, that flows through the diversity that we all bring to the table collectively. And I think these days um, we, we need to collaborate more. Representing her husband, this woman rightfully bears witness of his talent. Well, he's been quite an extraordinary photographer for as long as I've known him. But this is the first time he's sort of formally exhibiting his photography. He photographs everything. He seems to like birds. <laughs> Excuse the pun. So um, it's just lovely that this is happening with other outstanding photographs as well. And he's chosen to focus on, on birds. He's got incredible patience when he's photographing birds because it takes such skill to sort of wait and capture that exact moment. And that's, that's quite extraordinary. And I love the fact that you have professionals who do many different things, nurturing their skills and showcasing their skills. I think that's, that's saying a lot, what people can do with their God-given talents. I think we need to encourage people to do that. To, you have a talent that you aren't using. You've got to identify it. You've got to invest in it and do something like this to share it with others. I think that's really great because none of them here are professional photographers, but they're showing all this beautiful work to all of us. Support is key, and those that have rallied round these first-time exhibitors are highly impressed by the quality of their works. You know, I've seen I've seen most of these pictures on a screen before, but to see them blown up, it's actually it's actually almost a dream come true because I've been telling him that he needs to show people and to get it on this scale. I mean, to, and to have them all in one room, it's absolutely amazing. Walking in, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, the pictures, the photography is all professionally done. They look so professional. Um, it's meeting to the eye. It's pleasing. Um, the captivating, the layout, the standard of the work that's been produced. Um, I'm really, really, really amazed. When you say they're done by Greenhorns, I, I, I kind of take a step back and I go, actually what I see are you know, images that are likely to have been done by skillful observers who show the nuance and variance of the city in which I live um, and provide more joy. They show me things that I haven't seen. So that's, that's welcoming. I'm surprised to be sure, blown away to the extent in which all of these images are drawn from our immediate environment and it takes uh, the keen eye of photographer to be able to bring it out. So to that extent I'm surprised that okay it looks familiar in a way in which you've seen it before but you're never quite like this. So to that extent yes I'm blown away but it's a really exciting uh, collection of photography by some you know dedicated photographers with very 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 keen eyes on, on life, people, and the landscape, which is Lagos. So Lagos is the backdrop and the canvas for most of them. And all kinds of surprising photographs about Lagos that just says, wow, OK, I didn't know this was there. The other thing I think is also important was the, the kind of technique and the, um, the material that was used. Most of them are printed on canvas. And so canvas gives it another texture. So there's a third dimension to the photograph. You have a tactile sense that it's almost like a painting. So it brings out the relief of the picture. A whole different experience from just looking at a picture. Instruments of clicks vary, but what matters more than the technology employed is the moment when your eye speaks to the mind to stop, poise, and shoot. Were you able to tell the difference? Maybe not, but notice how crystal clear the images are. Sometimes big things 
come in small packages. And coming up on Art House, we meet a Kenyan artist who paints issues a lot of his colleagues don't want to touch. In a moment, join us again. He took up a government post as a civilian administrator for the port city of Boni in the Niger Delta. And during the Nigerian Civil War, he was a strong supporter of the federal course against the Biafrans. He was a writer and producer. Mm -hmm. 